Jolly Glover, and welcome to my radio podcast program entitled Kingdom Dynamics, an analytic view of kingdom principles, based upon my newly released book, Created for Success. This program will be discussing key principles of successful living. The core discussions will be on discovering your identity in Christ, operating in purpose and power to maximize your potential in Christ, forming kingdom relationships and building godly cultures through divine community connections, following principles of faith by God's plan and provisions for covenant believers, alignment for kingdom citizenship, and establishing God's standards here on earth, being the light of the world, and sharing the gospel of salvation to the lost. Enjoy the podcast. Hello, hi. Uh, It is wonderful to be here again uh, doing another podcast of Kingdom Dynamics. And I have with me today a wonderful guest. He has a testimony that is literally, literally out of this world. Um, His name is Reverend Eddie Wiggins. Thank you for having me. Nice having you with me here today. Yeah. And uh, your testimony is a testimony that not many people have had the privilege to experience, although some people might consider it as being a a horror to experience as well. Yeah. Uh, Because um, Jesus, you had an experience, a Jesus experience, whereby you actually went to hell and back. And back. So tell us something. Thank God for the back. Tell us something about that experience. I'm going to just have you talk about it. Okay. Uh, It is incredible. For those who are listening, uh, you're going to be amazed at this story. Thank you so much. I was a drug addict for 31 years, and it was August 7, 2005, Saturday afternoon, just waking up. The dealer had just left. I cook up half of my cocaine, got a big old sack of weed, but such a tiny knot, I couldn't figure out how they even tied this knot. So rather than rip the bag open and have weed all over the table, I just set it on the coffee table. Took my first hit, sat down to feel that rush, and a light appeared just a little further from me than you are, just at about two and a half feet. And in that light was a figure. And in that figure, I knew it was the Lord Jesus. I heard his voice before. So when he spoke, uh, I knew it was him, but I also knew I was in trouble. Now, I had just taken a hit. When that light appeared, it blew the heart. And his voice said, I'm sick of you. I'm not taking any more from you. You put another drug in that body, you will condemn your soul to hell for forever. And you know that I'm not a guy, a God that can lie. You do it. You can go to Pastor Parsley, you can go to T.D. Jakes, you can go to Pastor Hubbard. No one can pray this off of you. You put another drug in that body, and you will condemn your soul to hell. Mm. And hear me with my silly self. I'm looking at the dope on the table and just realize I didn't feel a thing. So I, why I asked. I said, Lord, I understand. Could we start this new program after I finish these drugs? On the table? That's when he grabbed me. He reached out and grabbed me by this elbow. I call it the two-finger program. Mm-hmm. And instantly, we were in that pit of hell. I saw it. It's real. It's so huge, you can't see the end of it. It's so deep, I couldn't see the bottom. As we're coming in, it's just caverns and cave, and it's like, for lack of a better example, imagining the Grand Canyon underground. And there's nothing man-made in hell. It's just fire and smoke and wall and people. As we're coming in in the air, I see what I believe are millions of torches 
spread out all over the caves. Funny thing was, no light was emitted into the cave from these candles or torches or whatever they were. It was like the light stopped a foot past the flame. Just stayed right there. And below me, I could see the lake of fire. It was about a mile and a half below us. We're floating in the air, he's still holding me by my arm. And the th black, thick smoke pouring up out of that, uh, you know, out of the uh, lake of fire prevented me from seeing in the lake. I couldn't tell you if anybody's actually in that lake or not because I couldn't see through the smoke. But I knew it was the lake because the rocks around it were glowing red and the wall that it was hanging was glowing red. But also, it didn't emit any light into that pit of hell. No light at all. Hell is the absence of light. The sun doesn't touch it. The moon doesn't touch it. The stars don't light up. It is the absence of light. As we're coming in, well, let me tell you about the screams. Millions of people screaming, ghastly screams I've ever it almost sounded choir-like because of the unison, but they weren't singing. Most horrible sound I've ever heard. As we're coming closer to one of these torches on the wall, I'm looking at it, and I realize, hey, that's not a candle. That's not a torch. That is a person fully inflamed in fire. From their toes to the top of their head, they were bald-headed, naked, not a hair on their body, and their teeth all broken up and spit coming down their chin and snot coming out of their noses. And the Lord pointed, and he said, Look, there you are. And I looked through this fire, and I could see me, bald-headed, on fire, naked, not a hair on my body. Now, when I say naked, don't think of earthly naked. It ain't nothing pretty. Think of like a zombie movie with this pasty, grayish, whitish skin where you can see every bone underneath. It's horrible, ugly, dastardly. If I, I can be so uh, bold as to say. And he said, you've been here 200 years. Get in that body and see what you're thinking. And I tried to look back at the Lord like, Lord, what do you mean? See what I'm thinking? He's gone. Before I could even get it out, he's gone, and I'm in that hot body. I have never felt pain like that before in my life. You won't. They don't have that kind of pain here on hell. I mean, here on earth. You, there isn't a word in the English vocabulary or any other language that can describe the pain of hell. For lack of a better word, I call it supernatural. Mm. I screamed and I screamed. I felt that pain. Every nerve ending is alive. I felt that pain all the way from my toes to the top of my head. Now see, here on earth, we're born with a shock system. You could be in a horrible, horrible accident. Wake up in the hospital and the nurse will tell you that the car flipped over 17 times. They had to cut you out with the jaws of life. What a miracle it is that you're alive. And you're like, really? I never felt a thing. You won't because you're going to shock. No shock system. You feel every bit of that pain. Now, to describe that pain, which is very difficult, I can come close. Imagine the old pizza ovens. They were made out of brick, and they had that big metal door and those long sticks with the pan on it, and they would slide it under that pizza and shove it into that brick oven. Well, imagine sticking your arm into that oven and leaving it. Don't, no, don't pull it out. Leave it there longer. Just try to imagine that pain of your arm in a pizza oven for that amount of time. Don't pull it back until all the flesh is melted off of your bone. Now, if you can imagine that pain, that's nothing compared to the pain of hell because you're on fire from your toes all the way to the top of your head. You feel it all. I screamed screamed and screamed and screamed until nothing would come out. And that's when I found out what the Bible is talking about. 
with weeping and gnashing of teeth. So I always wonder what that is. <sighs> Just because you can't scream anymore doesn't mean the pain has gone away. You still have that pain. And I gritted my teeth so hard from the pain that next time I could scream, I was spitting out teeth. And now was coming from my mouth. I felt something I never felt on earth in hell. Hopelessness. See, there's no hope in hell because there's no exits and you're going to do this forever. And hopelessness feels like the weight of a planet riding on your shoulders. It just crushes you. It crushes you physically and spiritually and emotionally. It crushes everything that you are. I heard the voices of people that had spoke to me where God had, you know, spoke through them. I didn't know he could do that. You know, somebody should have told me that because I heard their voices. You're going to hear them for eternity because these were the opportunities where God was speaking to you to try to stop you from whatever it is that you're doing and to reel you back in. And I heard them. That's what condemns you. You see, he's not condemning you to hell. You condemn yourself to hell for the life and the decisions and choices that you make in this life. My life was pure sin from the time I woke up until the time I passed out. So I heard him, boy, if you don't put that pipe down and find you some Jesus, if you don't leave that cocaine alone and get yourself in church, you are going to burn in hell. You see, nobody can go to hell and be able to say to God, who is righteous, you've made a mistake. You'll know exactly why you're there amen and so uh, uh it just got so bad i screamed out kill me kill me i can't do this anymore i certainly can't do this for eternity kill me now i don't want to live. and this word this bible spoke to me in hell now i used to always wonder whether or not the Word of God is really the Word of God. Because mm -hmm. I seem to have trouble doing this, and he couldn't have meant this for me because I can't do that. And me and the Word weren't getting along because it was hard for me to follow it. So I used to wonder if it was really God's Word. It spoke to me. It actually clowned me. I hung on the wall burning, and it said, God has made universe that you haven't even discovered yet. But you don't believe he can write a book? I'm already crushed. Right. What yeah. you're asking for, mm -hmm. to die, it doesn't exist. Everyone lives forever somewhere, and this is where you chose. Oh, I was wrong. I mean, totally wrong. It was like getting hit with a sack of quarters right in the chest. Totally convicted. I thought all my friends that were up on top of the earth getting, you know, got all these girls coming over and doing all the things that we did. And I thought, wow, they have no idea what's in store for them. They don't have any idea what's waiting for them. I thought to myself, my God, what have I done? Everything in my life that I touched, I and now I've lost my eternal life with Christ for forever? What have I done? Instantly. We're back in the den. The dope's on the table. He's standing there in his marvelous light. I am looking at myself like, whoa, where's the fire? I couldn't believe I wasn't on fire. And I heard this little voice inside my chest say, he's going to give you another chance. And I just rebuked him. I thought, oh, not going to give me another chance. Why would he give me another chance? You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't know his love. I didn't know that he could do that. You know, I thought I was doomed. I didn't think I was ever getting out of there. When he let me go and I hit that hot body, he disappeared. Wow. I thought it was over. And so uh, that's when the Lord spoke again. And he said, son, you have a decision to make. You better make it quickly. Your eternal destin destination you depends on your very next decision. 
what will it be? Me? No, before he said that, he said, your name is in the book of life, but I forgot how to erase it. Next decision will determine your eternal destiny. What will it be? Me or the best? Best decision I ever made. I said, you, I choose you. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, yeah. So I asked him, what do you want me to do with the drugs? He said, slush them. He said, I am declaring this house holy ground. You're going to get all this pornography. I had a few magazines. A few magazines. A well, few stacked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, had, I had a library. And a lot of DVD tapes and, uh, you know, all the night. So he yeah. had me put it all in a trash can, take it out to the trash. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was flushing the dope, he said, flush it. I ran. That bathroom was three feet away. Bathroom door. I literally scooped that stuff up and ran. And I uh, got the cocaine in the toilet and the weed in my hand, and I got my finger on the toilet to flush it all together at the same time. Rocks on the bottom, powders floating in the bag. And I heard this voice. You're an idiot. What are you doing? You're a drug addict. You can't stop. What are you going to do tomorrow? You better reach back down in there and get those drugs out of there. You know how much they cost? And you know who that was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I heard another voice inside me. Why are you listening to him? Don't you realize where we just came from? Flush that toy. I walk out the door with the trash bag with all the paraphernalia and the magazines and all the porn and everything else the Lord said to get rid of because he had declared the house holy ground. Sure enough, up above our street is a hill. On that hill was a black and white LAPD police car with two officers looking at you. Now I just got out of hell. My heart's already pounding. Okay, I'm not sure if he's giving me another chance because I know darn well I don't deserve it. But I'm doing everything he says as fast as I can. And now, oh, Lord, back to the county again. And he said, that's right. To jail tonight. And you didn't even know it. He said, but because you move quickly, I'm going to spare you jail. Go back in the house. Go to sleep. And when you wake up, you'll have no withdrawals. You'll have no monkey on your back. And no regret. And do you know I walked away from 31 years. I was doing a quarter piece of cocaine a day. That's, That's two how, eight balls. How, is, how big is two eight balls? Mm-hmm. Well, an eight ball rocked up would probably be about like that. Wow. And I was doing 20s in one hit. Mm. And I would have one, in, one eight ball in the morning, another one in the evening, and sometimes the evening turned into morning. I found out later that half of an eight it's a man in overdose. I had no idea he was keeping me from jail. Such as now. I should have been dead a long time ago. Mm, that's bad. Yeah. That was merciful. And walked away clean. Mm. I mean, I used to have the shakes. I'd wake up in the morning. If I didn't save some dope from the night before, I was having a rough morning until I could get somebody to get by there. Mm. I had to get some in my system, and I would shake. Nothing. Mm, so you were walked totally... Walked away. Totally set free and delivered from that day forth. When Jesus delivers you, you can know you Mm -hmm. are delivered. If you're praying for somebody in your family or you have a relative or loved one or even a friend that you've been praying for, don't give up. Keep praying. If the Mm -hmm. Lord can save me, there's nobody. That's an incredible testimony. Uh, There's a couple of questions I want to ask about uh, your experience in hell. Now, did you sense that there was a, a devil around or any people that you might want to uh, compare, you know, their suffering with your suffering? How did that play out? You know, people on earth say, I don't mm-hmm. care about going to hell. All my friends are going to be there. Right. You're not going to know them unless you saw them on earth on fire, totally naked and bald-headed. How mm-hmm. would you recognize them? Number two, there was nobody closer to me than maybe 150 feet. On each side. Mm -hmm. So even though there's millions of people already down there, it's like you're in your own personal. 
all alone. You don't care about them. There's no conversations in hell. There's only screaming or gnashing your teeth. Mm. Back and forth. So I didn't recognize anyone I knew. Right. Your other question was? Uh, about, did you sense that... Um, oh, that demons. The yeah, demons or Satan or anybody? The Lord and asked it me. Would be, you know, turning some other types of torment. Right. I don't know where they get that from. Mm -hmm. that the demons are going to be tormenting human beings, mm -hmm. that's their home, too. Right. They're going to be on fire there. As well. Oh, they're going to be right. tortured there. Mm -hmm. You see, that's where they're getting their judgment. You see pictures of them whipping people. No. Uh, the Lord asked me, he said, do you want to know what you didn't see while you were in the pit of hell? And I said, yeah, Lord, what didn't I see when I was down there in hell? He said, did you see a devil or a demon? No, Lord, I didn't. That's right, not one. Where were they? Up here on the earth. Trying to get you all down there. Mm. Amen. Wow. They operate. It's said that they operate mm -hmm. from hell. No, mm -hmm. They operate on the earth. Mm, the earthly realm. And also yeah. the... the um, the air, the air above the earth. Principalities the air. That's right. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. the spiritual warfare is around mm -hmm. us and above us. Yeah, yeah. On this earth. Wow. That's, right. That's incredible. Um, now, what would you tell someone who happens to be like um, they're vacillating between two opinions, whether or not they should serve God, or whether or not they should be about the world? Yeah, good question. Well, I'll take you where Jesus took me. We went back to hell. We didn't go in hell. Mm -hmm. We went to the gate of hell. And when we went the first time and we're in hell, we were close to the same height, you know? But this time, I'm like real small. And he's like real tall. And I'm looking up at his face. And he's got his hand on the gate. This is a time in the future. And he's closing it for now, if you've ever seen a man cry, see a tear coming down his cheek, it wasn't like that. At all. His entire face was soaking wet. And as I'm standing next to him, in my chest, I felt his heart. I didn't know he loved us. These are the damned, the doomed, <clears throat> the lost. Excuse me, I almost cried there. Mm. And uh, he loves them still. Yeah. The whole reason they're in hell is because they didn't love him back. Mm. But it never stopped his love. Mm. In spite of us, he loves us. Right. And I think the person that you're describing that's teeter-tottering or wavering mm -hmm. as to which way they want to go, they got to know it how much he loves. They may not realize how much he loves them. We look at somebody who's done a horrible crime here on earth and say, you deserve to be in hell. That was horrendous. I hope you burn it. Mm. You have no idea what you're saying. You see? But his want is that no one would be. Mm. His want is that he could love us forever in heaven with him, close to him. Yeah. That's an incredible love. Mm -hmm. It changed my ministry. It changed my because now we can't even put a finger on how much he loves us, right. those that are saved. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because it's going to break his heart to lose one. Wow. I would say get off that road. Mm -hmm. In one sentence. In one sentence. Fall in love with Jesus. Mm. That's right. Because right. he already loves you. Mm. Yeah. Yes. yes. This isn't something to play with. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't teeter-totter. If there's a line, politicians like to say a line drawn in the sand, mm -hmm. you need to be on his side as far away from that line as you can get. That's right. That's right. You know, we half-heartedly maybe did our homework when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Just good enough to, Just to pass. pass. Right, right. Because we wanted to play. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Then when we got our first job, we didn't really want to uh, put our heart into it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not working overtime for that man, making him richer. I'm going to do my time and go home. So we get conditioned in life, never truly do giving our hap- all. Hap- 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 Hazard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, do things, um, you know, slack fully. Yeah. Right. That's right. right. That's right. But the truth is that we will spend eternity somewhere, whether it be heaven or hell. Yeah. It's our choice. It's our decision. We would just trust in the Savior who is able to save our soul and prevent us from having to go to a place like right. hell. He did everything he could. That's right. Our sin, my sin, mm-hmm. drove those nails in. Yes, yes, he paid that the cross. Price. That was my cross. Yes, yes. Mine but he said, too. "No, no, I love, yeah. I love you. Mm-hmm. You stay here. He'll do it. Let me get up on the cross yes. and die for you. Mm-hmm. You just believe. In me. Let me work through you. Mm-hmm. Let me love on you. The love I pour into you, share with me. Mm-hmm. And we got eternity." To talk about this, you know. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes, a, a contrite spirit. He would in no wise passed away. And I believe yeah. that has something to do with also your um, your turnaround. Because while you were in that hellish like experience, you yet um, cried out, and you also um, knew that you had did something wrong. And that My you deserve life. to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I knew. Mm-hmm. I bought hell with mm-hmm. the life I was living. Mm-hmm. So you experienced yeah. some some uh, repentance um, while yet you still had the breath of life within you. So you you had the, yeah. the chance to be able to turn your life around. He now, brought me second, back, and I'm mm-hmm. telling you. I'm running for him now. The amen yeah. to that. Yeah. Amen to that. It might not be hell's fire inside of me. I got that Holy Ghost Holy fire. Holy Ghost And nothing's going to stop me. Nothing's going to slow me down. My goal is to get as many people off of that road of destruction. Mm-hmm. Tell That's as what many counts. people about hell and on to hell. That's incredible. Yeah. Your testimony. Now Thank tell you. me, how can people reach out to you? The book, To Hell and Back, mm-hmm. is an Amazon Kindle. It's a Kindle book you can download. I think it's a dollar ninety nine, something like that. Okay. I have the book, The Boy with Stripes, available on Amazon Books. I'm going to need to get you back for that. <laughs> yeah, book. yeah. That's another story. That's yes, incredible. ma'am. You can find me on Facebook, mm-hmm. Rev Eddie, one word, Rev Eddie Wiggins. And I minister there. I'm also on YouTube, uh, Yahshua is Lord. Ministries. Mm-hmm. I've got about twenty videos, nineteen of them on deliverance. Okay. Because I sure need a deliverance, and my testimony. Is up there I as know well. why you have a ministry of deliverance because um, yeah. reading your story, you had several uh, episodes where you you had to be delivered from. Oh yeah. And you you I was you a led liar, a, a thief, traumatic a womanizer, a drug addict, I drank, I smoked, God. What didn't I do? And couldn't and, stop. And what actually happened to you as well? You experienced a great deal of abuse in yes. so many different levels. Yeah. So the sto- your story, uh, we just we have to come back and touch on that story. Thank you. I and would love I think be honored of, to come back. Oh, it, it would be my pleasure. Yeah. A lot of people will be encouraged by your story. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You, you have and a story. Thank you to for tell. having me. It was my pleasure. It would be an honor to have you back again. Thank you. Now, and thank you, guys. And those of you who were able to uh, check out this story, um, there will be other stories that will uh, come to follow after this. Uh, and so I look forward to having you back again on the podcast. And until then, be blessed continually. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.